Yeah, uh, I'm excited for it. It's uh, you could for sure tell that this this and I that's what I've heard too that this story is supposed to be pulling a lot from the brand new day storyline, uh, and um, what's the other one? Brand new day, and then the, I forget what the other one that goes right in that, after that. Um, you know where Peter makes the deal with Mephisto and tries to yeah. save, uh, and then um, there's a little bit of two of that Civil War kind of. Um, I was going to say, because the uh, whole but, strange thing comes from post-Civil War stuff. Yeah. Well, I was saying, too, because there is that, it, if you, because I was watching the trailer now, and it, and it and if you kind of listen, there's there's Doctor Strange talking, but then he says, be careful what you wish for, Peter Parker. And I don't know, that kind of felt to me like, I don't know, maybe that wasn't Doctor Strange. Maybe it was Mephisto. <laughs> maybe. Me. I mean, it definitely could be. I mean... Um, because it was kind of weird for him to say something like that. So, I don't know. Uh, well, I definitely have to see, because, you know, there's so many rumors of this, what's going on in this movie. There's rumors of of uh, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire is supposed to be, but they're all claiming no, that they're not in this movie. But then there's even been uh, photos of uh, Gwen Stacy's M uh, Emma Stone and uh, MJ's, um, I forget, uh, Dunson is her last name. But uh, yeah, they, they were like seen together, you know, so it's like, I don't know, who who, who knows where this movie's going. And then on top of that, too, they were, there was also uh, the leak of the Deed Years had uh, released the runtime. And supposedly this is supposed to be the, the longest running solo uh, Marvel movie uh, besides, you know, Avengers movie being a three hour long movie. So right. I, I, I didn't get to see the actual runtime, but I, I don't I, I'm guessing they're going for a three-hour <laughs> run time for this, dude. It, it's got to be close. And once again, for a story like this, I don't really mind. I feel like the yeah. problem a lot of times in other ones is they push these stories out so far for things that really are not that complex. You know what I mean? It's not. There's not that much going on in a lot of stories. There's usually one hero, one villain, and maybe a couple pieces to their plot. Whereas this is just by definition going to have to have way more than that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then what was your um, your take on the um, Doc Ock, you know, coming back from Spider-Man? Because I mean, like, that, we... that already kind of some, that somewhat was... confirms our Yeah, that had been theories. already confirmed too, though, because we – yeah, we, yeah, yeah, he did say that's, yeah, that's true. That's – there's a couple things that had bothered me with a, a few things, one being that – we already knew, right? We knew Alfred Molina was in on this, and I can't remember if it was just from him or if there were like leaks on the actor list or what it was exactly. Because I've also I've been hearing a bunch of people like on YouTube and stuff. It's like, oh, this person's confirmed and this person's confirmed. See, and I was like, that's, you like I, don't, I, don't I haven't really heard any heart. Yeah, I, mean, like, I, I, I haven't heard where anything. These are coming from. So if um, they must be doing a really good job, if they're really, you know, and if they do that, I'll be really like, like excited if I like they hid this stuff for that good. We're like, they really, it really was. Andrew was on set. Toby was on set. Everyone's on set. We're, we're just going to blast you with it. <laughs> but I, I don't know. We'll see. That's just my high hopes of, of what this movie is going to be like. Um, it may be something totally different than what we're all trying to, trying to have it to be. <laughs> but I, I don't think it's going to be that different. I think that that was, that was far from home far from home was marvel basically trolling us in a lot yeah. of ways it's just in the yeah. multiverse category right like they were yeah. like yeah multiverse and they're like ah i gotcha yeah that was such a such a tease with that yeah. mysterious thing and it made sense it really did but then they made they it made, they, they honestly made it made sense in a lot of ways Maybe, yeah yeah but and I it, still I still like the Mysterio character. It was still he the ending no, that, that scene was, was just, pretty cool. But yeah, I, yeah. I, you know what you mean. It's the yeah. same thing when they did the uh, Mandarin. You know they they teased us so badly. It was and then yeah, ended which up we're being getting that. the Mandarin finally. As well. Which they is, end, it's funny uh, enough that we're gonna get both of those. And you know, it's like even more funny. Uh, Disney Plus even just posted up uh, the "Hail to the King" uh, short videos on the on the Disney Plus. So, so so now it's part of the you know. So everyone, because a lot, uh, you know, the, uh, the only time you could watch that was on YouTube, right? On online, I don't think it was any no, show they anywhere were, else. They were. Par I thought they were extras on some DVD. Okay, that's what it was. I, yeah, I might have been. Okay. were extras on a DVD, and you really couldn't get them anywhere. But yeah, I have seen the short stories posted up there, and they are. I mean, they were always MCU canon, but just yeah. not. 
But now everyone know, like if they want to know, hey, who's the, you know, who is that Mandarin then? Who, who the hell is this Mandarin? Now? No, <laughs> and and they and that was why they were kind of left alone. Is a lot of them were just like open ended, right? Like they were in case they wanted to do something with that later on, which they are doing, right? So I, I don't know. I, I don't get me wrong. I was just they're, as, they're good so far too. I, the reviews are coming out so far, and it's uh, I'm, I'm hearing some killer reviews, honestly, and I. <laughs> I don't know why it bothers me because I'm absolutely sure, especially from seeing some of the preview images, that the new trailers they keep dropping for Shang Chi every day are just like these clips of music and the same footage again and again a lot of the times. And there's like a yeah, theme I, behind I, it. I, I try to stay away after they start posting like three, I, four. Trailers. I'm I, like, I, okay, I try to do a, a more couple. Can you show me. I try to do a couple, but I think I'm gonna make it a point from now on to not watch the final trailer because they always put a little too much in it do they okay yeah it's like in this last eternal one they could and i had already gotten some like behind like heard, heard things right from people like oh it's gonna be this i don't know why i watch things anymore because it just gets spoiled but <laughs> but um they, there are just some things in the trailers which kind of give away more of the story than i think needed to be given away uh, yeah, uh, for the Eternals, not necessarily. I guess Spider Man too, though, because it really does frame the whole story, right? Like, obviously, we don't know the specifics of the conflict of the story, but the the pre um, what's it? The concept of like the multiverse being the problem is absolutely gonna be what this movie's about. You know what I mean? That's gonna be. We know that's what the movie's about. And yeah. even more so to the point of, like, we know exactly basically how we got there, right? Even though we don't know the specifics, we know that there's a spell, Spidey messes up the spell, and then the multiverse is all screwed up. Which we maybe didn't need the whole intro spelled out for us on the, on the trailer. But just uh -huh. little things like that. Otherwise, I mean, I think there's a lot of good... The, the problem is Marvel is definitely a troll. Marvel is not afraid to troll you. I feel like they, they, one, they know they're doing good stuff and like they can get away with kind of messing with people. Uh, I'm trying to think of like specific examples, but I can't think of them off the top of the head and I know they do them where they're like, yeah, we got you. We knew you wanted this and we're just not going to give it to you for whatever reason or just to mess with you, stuff like that. Um, the the other one I'm really excited about, I don't know if you saw the trailer for it yet, was uh, Moon Knight got its trailer. Oh, did they finally drop? I did not see that. When yeah, was that dropped? Uh, it dropped roughly around the same time as all those other big trailers were dropping, but because all of the other, you know, Shang-Chi and Final Eternals and, yeah, but maybe we'll show it for the, um, for the last piece of the, um, uh, episode we'll do it at the end or whatever okay. and then we can yeah. just show it and watch it because it it was pretty cool and i think they're gonna do a good job with it i mean they've been i can't think of an overall title marvel has really screwed up there's there was like even the things that people are maybe not that happy with like captain marvel sometimes i don't feel like they really screwed up at all like it was it was a fair interpretation kind of of marvel's journey to to where they went right like, i mean there was portions cut out but no more so than anybody else but yes. yeah I, I can't think of a single like title they've messed up so far so i'm excited for moon Knight because even if moon knight himself isn't good the rest of the show will be good around him but i think moon yeah Knight no, will be good too. i think it should be good it, it'll be um and it, isaac looked pretty good from yeah, the, that's what I was the promo say. pics i was looking at yeah. so uh, I'm pretty excited to see what what they'll do with Moon Knight. Um, so I guess yeah, with more Spider Man, then pretty much there's just yeah, kind of wait to see what they'll do. When is the Spider Man supposed to be releasing? They said the end of this year, right? When was it? Yeah, December. I don't know if they oh, gave December. it exact date. I just think okay. they just said. Uh... Such a long time to wait, but <laughs> and it sucks too. Uh, about Venom too as well. I don't. Uh, we'll see if Venom comes out because I, I heard it got pushed back twice, and then now there's even saying it's gonna get pushed back till next year. Oof. Uh, we'll see. 
currently um, I, it still has an october 15th that's release good. date so that's good so i hope though yeah i think they'll still keep to that that date but we'll see um what else did i see that was coming out i know spider-man i know we did get some space uh space <laughs> cowboy uh bebop um yeah we had their cowboy release of their trailer. And, and those are pretty cool um i know there was a little bit of controversy with Faye and uh but i mean it <sighs> To me, it's totally fine. They sh they still made it look, you know, kind of sexy in some type of way, but it's not like in a way where she has to be fully, you know, non-clothed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like in the anime, they it, have her they, boobs spilling out of her shirt every episode. And a lot of people are trying to explain that it's like, well, that's what she does. You know, she uses her sex appeal. I'm like, yeah, I know, but like the you know the Japanese are known for that, anyways. Like. They they are known for fan service, and so that was that's fan service, bro. Even, just... <laughs> even still, to if you think that a woman needs to like get naked to use her sexual appeal on you, then you just haven't oh, met so much. It's like you watch too much porn. Uh, that, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I get it, but for you to be hung up on that piece of yeah. what what is essentially a, a character who exists altogether also outside of that part of her character I, we all agree on something though that they should have kept her shorts yellow at least but i guess it probably wouldn't have looked maybe as good like in the movie as, i'm not you know, taking I'm some not, things no, don't no, transfer no. well i'm not taking any excuses they've done every single superhero costume correct in one movie or another and some of those are god awful gaudy colorful you know what yeah, i mean right. Uh, they got so, Scarlet Witch's costume correct. They I mean, they did that Loki. great. That was, that was awesome. Uh, yeah, did... that's not like a little disappointing. I was like, they could at least kept the shorts no, a little bit more yellow. I did agree but... with that, yeah. I think color scheme is important, especially because in a lot of anime and stuff, they're visually representative of their character. <laughs> so, like, her character wears yellow because she is the more, like, upbeat out of the trio. If yeah. You know what I mean? If there was... Because you've really got the sullen old man, you've got crotchety, smoking, gambling man, and then you've got, you know what I mean? It's like, those are the personalities, and they're represented very well by their kind of outfits, colors, and everything else about them. No, but, no, yeah. no ads yet, but that, that makes sense, because, uh, you know, we didn't really get her, or her, uh, her, or her, her, I always forget him or her, but anyways... And we didn't really get Ed till I think what till halfway through the the yeah, season it takes, of the... it takes a while. So um, that makes sense, really, not to. But I did like that we got to see some Ayn, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> pretty, it's gonna uh, be fun. I'm gonna have to go back and watch everything in the movie again too. I yeah, definitely. I've movie. been uh, I've been watching the the series again. I even picked up the uh, they did a. Um, his records are coming to be a big thing again. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they uh, they did a really cool uh, cow uh, Cowboy Bebop two records of the, the you know the whole soundtrack. I love that soundtrack too as well. Sometimes I yeah. just play it on Spotify. <laughs> it's a good soundtrack. Um, but yeah, I had to pick up the, just the record because I just love this, and then I just love that also he's coming back, the same composer to do the show. So <laughs> it, it should still have that same kind of you know. I I think yeah. everything's gonna work out pretty great for the show. Um, I think it should be good. I think. One of the things that it's got going for it the best is that it's one of the most adaptable anime titles, right? Yeah, like it doesn't have definitely. any crazy shaped people or it, super weird powers outside yeah. of the bounds of like regular science fiction, right? And so I think yeah. it. I mean, if they could do Star play. Wars, I could do Cowboy yeah, Bebop, and absolutely. that's all they. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and that's kind of what I mean. Is it's just it's more in the line of some more typical visual effects stuff that you might yeah. see in a regular movie and so it's sh it should translate well in addition the cowboy bebop is written in a more mature way than most oh yeah definitely and anime. yeah so it's going to be a lot easier to transfer that way too right whereas like we talked about how um the the live action bleach actually did a really good job at putting like the energy of the comics into the vocalization right where it's like even when you're saying ridiculous things or doing you're not going to have that the need to do that in cowboy bebop the, the conversations are much more down to earth there's no like special attacks getting yelled out in the middle of fights right so just just examples yeah not, not and, criticizing well and then now that we're kind of on the netflix stuff there uh they did release the avatar um cast members as well and uh I don't know. We'll see about Aang. Um, Aang looks... They all look like pretty good choices, but uh, I'm just... 
I'm still a little disappointed that the original creators won't be attached to this. So I'm yeah. like, you know, I'm still a little hesitant on like, you know, if the creators didn't want to stay on, you know, so what what are they doing that the creators didn't want to yeah. go along with them? So I'm like, I don't know. We'll see how that one's going to turn out. I, I hope they don't they don't block, <laughs> block yeah. that one up. Well, especially because something the thing about at one of the things about Avatar, don't get me wrong, it had good animation and everything else but the creation of the world and the characters around avatar are what make it so powerful and well in the writing too as well don't get me it's it's really good too it's it's a very solid piece pretty much all around all it hits all those good categories you know what i mean but to not have the main creative directors behind that world influencing it we're, i'm just hoping we don't end up with another Shamalan, <laughs> Lama man. Oof. Oof. I wanted that movie to be so good. Don't you? Don't you like? You know what? That when you like, you go into yeah. the movie you're like. Oh, I, I knew. Movie you know the messed so up part. Be like, oh, I, we no. knew it was gonna be bad though from the trailer drop. That was the messed up part. As soon as you heard him say "ong," you were like. Oh yeah, I do remember that. That was a big thing. I, I remember like, when it dropped. Everyone was like, "He said that this is gonna be garbage." How does and they that? Were right. ha- that makes no sense to me. Like how I, that happens? Like you what? know what? Bothers, you guys, uh, did they not study the the material of where it comes from, or like I don't know? It just right. makes no sense to me. I wanted to check this before I say it, but I I swear. And then another thing too I didn't like too was that remember they that the firebenders couldn't actually firebend they could just only manipulate fire. So that that was another another kind of like big thing I was like yeah doesn't really make them as powerful now because now they have to have fire right next to them to use it. Yeah, it was there was a whole bunch of things that were like really rough and like and I went and looked it up but uh, from what I had heard, he had taken the job because either him or his like kids or something were big fans That's what I heard. of the series. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't yeah. know how you can. Yeah, fuck it up right, that right. Bad. You're in it for your kid, right? Your kid's a, a big fan of it. Wouldn't you think you'd want to do it the right way? <laughs> your kid, then, now right? Your kid's or or take some, be like, take some my, hints. My the one that messed up Avatar. I'm sorry, guys. You can hate me, guys. I'm sorry. I can't even <laughs> tell you not to, man. I deserve it. I'm sorry. I shouldn't even have told him about it. You shouldn't have told him about it. Just shut up. But but like shit like that, right? Like, cause for for example, just comparing it um to something kind of similar was um Brawlin when he did Thanos. His brother is like a huge comic fan, and so he's like, Oh yeah, do this and this and this is like he didn't like talk to your kid and be like, Well, we're gonna do this, and he's like, Well, that's stupid. It's like. <laughs> We're gonna call right. him Ong and make sure that the firebenders can't actually make fire. But wouldn't that make? And this... then we're gonna skip to at least chapter what was it three and at least one movie. Yeah, dude, we did it with so one hard, movie. dude. At least in a, not even in a two-hour span. Bro, I don't like, even know. Like an hour and thirty minutes how... movie. Or so. I literally like things like that. I start to wonder, like, where was the thought process on this? Like, what? What was the process of thinking that led to whatever is happening here? Because it can't have been logical, right? Like, you can't have, like, gotten from one, two, three to four here. Somebody skipped some steps and got to a place they weren't supposed to. They they, they probably just were so far along. They're like, bro, we just got to... Just, just do it just all. Put, We're not getting just, a fucking just, sequel. Just put, out, just put out whatever we can. It's going to be crap, but it's too oh late. Oh, my God. Go back. But, they're not gonna give us any. Uh, they're not gonna give us more money to redo any shoot. <laughs> it's like we're not getting we're not getting any reshoot money, and we're not getting a sequel. So do as much as you can. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, I mean, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how these other movies turn out. Um, I mean, they, they yeah, all look... don't do the Avatar. <laughs> yeah, what on, uh, yeah, I don't know. Everything's looking pretty good. I mean, I've heard ups and downs about a lot of stuff. I've I've heard a lot of flack from the Lord of the Ring community right now about the Amazon series. Yeah, it looks. I think it'll be good. They actually said they couldn't film in New Zealand though. They had to. I don't know where they said they're filming now for this. Uh, for this I show, wish, which I don't mind, depending on where they are and how they how they do it. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, like I think most of Lothlorien was just filmed on on a set on a set. You know what I mean? Um, 
and the whole thing about this that gets me is like i know why people are kind of irritated they're irritated because there are no writings of tolkien that are going to match to this book there's no book set in this age yeah Definitely. I don't know. We'll just have to see what they're going to do with the starter because I didn't I haven't even heard what the show was supposed to be based. I thought it was supposed to be like it's a prequel. It's supposed age. to be like about Sarah, Sauron mostly about. That's what I heard. I mean, I it's I think it's supposed to be. I don't know if what the um plot was. I just knew it was supposed to be set in the second age, I believe. And that it was supposed to be like, you know what I mean? It's very, very disconnected from any of the stories, characters that we've known before, right? In the in the other ones, we have like, uh, the hobbits being the main connection, and you'll still probably see other characters like Gandalf and um, yeah, you know, some of the elves and shit because they live forever or whatever. But other than that, we're not gonna see like. Gimli or anybody else popping out of the woodworks hopefully in this show and so I like I said I can understand why they would be irritated but if the Tolkien estate put the stamp on this because they don't just give out for anybody a lot of the time you know yeah I mean, they're very they're a little selective well even Amazon said it's going to be their most uh put that like, you know they put the most money into this oh, yeah. you know be the most well, produced show that they've ever done ever they, so yeah, well, they they kind of got to live up to what Peter Jackson did, and I mean, yeah, that was oh, a huge, definitely, yeah, huge level of production. You know what I mean? To the to the point that even though those movies were really blockbusters, I don't remember if they actually grossed that much money. Um, uh, but I'm I, I, yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, well, I think that's not coming out till next year, though, right? They're saying. Oh yeah, it's probably if if even well, we'll see. Yeah, I know how it yeah. is with all the stuff going on with COVID mm-hmm. closures coming back and. All that oh, going on. You know what we did miss to talk about Eternals? Uh, yeah. Did you see the, that trailer? I did. We had, That was one of the ones I was talking about where they put too much into the trailer. Yeah, they did. But that was, that I, was, I did like that they kind of explained some things, though. You're like, wait, no, hey, no, were they you didn't, yeah. with Thanos? I mean, that was pretty cool. At least they did some of that kind of stuff. Into no, it, it was but, a um, good trailer. The problems with the trailers are never not that they're not good for, for those last ones. It's just that they put a little bit too much. <laughs> Just a couple scenes, too, right? Like the one with Thena and um, the Deviant, whatever. Uh, yeah, I forget what his name is. They already have I, the action yeah, figure out. Yeah, I, I forget his name, too. And he's actually very famous in the comics, and there's a whole thing. And there's – right? He's It's very drawn from the comics, so I'm not mad. And obviously, we also got to see um, really – I mean, not the first look, but the first real look at the Celestials. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I was excited to see that we're they're getting more into the celestials now. I wonder how far they'll go into, you know, with like those cosmic beings, you know, will they do the, the internal or eternity or will they do um the um what's the other ones? The I forget it's the two faced guys. Oh, are you talking the name. Living Tribunal or are you talking Lord no. Chaos and Master Order? Yep, there we go. Master Order and Lord Chaos. I don't and think then, they'll do those because those are all celestial embodiments. Yeah, so see, so that's like, I wonder how far they will go, you know, but probably celestials will, you know, that's pretty cool to see that. <laughs> I'm hoping that they'll run celestials straight into a galactic's art. Well, not like straight, but I'm hoping that's the path of trajectory. I really hope, yeah, that's Because we're getting Fantastic too. Four over here, or, you know, way down the line here. So that gives them a lot of time to get into this kind of cosmic area that the Fantastic Four really kind of deal with i'd be down for that uh, yeah i'd be really excited for some like you know galactus being the next kind of big bad or that maybe not the next one you know maybe leading up into the future who knows you know right because uh, right now it looks like kang is really going to be yeah that's what i said. i think he might be the next one kind of coming and up and so then maybe at the end of that it's the cel- right the celestials come in and bitch smack kang and are like hey you're with the universe you bitch like, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see exactly what the you know what they're gonna do with that. Yeah, that absolutely. it's all cool. Uh, I know some Marvel fans though, like especially in the toy collecting community, some of them are like, man, they're not too excited for this. Like, but we'll see how it goes. You know, they they may this may end up being a really good movie, and people may end up I, really like these characters. And I'm not gonna lie, I think it's gonna be really good because it seems to be going for something they haven't really done yet. I mean, they're doing obviously their typical formula. Yeah. But what I like about Marvel is they apply their formula to different kinds of movies, right? So you have, like, Ant-Man, which is really a dad movie, right? That's a dad-kid yeah. movie. 
hundred percent, all the way. Uh, you have Black Widow, spy movie, spy action, but it's a spy movie. Um, Avengers are just pure action. You have uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which are action but kind of buddy comedy, family I cosmic, comedy. I cosmic E too. Yep. Kind of in that you know, area. so they they apply them to these different kinds of stories. Um. And I think this one's going to be a classic love story in a lot of ways. The way they're framing, I think, I can't remember, it's Icarus and, uh, I always forget all the Eternals' names because, once again, yeah. it's, it's so just funny. Something I'm, uh, yeah, I've been on with for a while. It's I, I, just I, not I, even I mean, that. They are just not that popular. Like, I can name no. Eternals, right? Like, I can name Makari, I can name Icarus, I can name uh, Athena and like, three or four. But one, there's, like, ten of them. So there's 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 a big ass roster of people who sometimes sprite right like I can name the Eternals but they are not that popular in the comics and they're not that yeah. active I, in the comics either. Yeah, that I just hope they don't you know they don't do an Inhumans on us with this. Movie. Well, once again, <laughs> uh, you know, for all the bluster we give them, Marvel has not to date messed up one of their movie franchises. They've messed up individual movies here and there. We've talked about, obviously, how... And once again, even though we don't like them, a lot of people enjoy some of the, the movies we're not always too thrilled about, right? Like, uh, some people d don't d love Thor 2 and Iron Man 3 or Iron Man 2. It's like... <laughs> and once again, some of them are not really even that bad. They're just not as good as a typical marvel movie which we've kind of expect a standard now of marvel movies to be pretty right. well done right and so which i mean they keep delivering so i can't keep well uh, so and then while we're kind of talking about galactus um today is the last day if anybody wants to to uh fund before mid uh midnight i think eastern time um to fund the Galactus uh, Haslab for Hasbro, it's our it's already been funded, but this is you know this would be your last chance to actually get the figure. So if not, you'd probably be spending some pretty big money on aftermarket for him. But uh, we've they've already unlocked all the tiers. Uh, a lot of people thought we weren't going to make it, but we did. Uh, so if you guys do support it, you'll get that 32 inch uh, tall figure of Galactus who lights up. His fingers are articulated. I think it comes with like two different face plates. Um, oh, he's going to even, uh, one of the tiers that we unlocked, he's going to come with a big giant doom head, um, which is, I don't know if you remember, that was in one of the comics when the Thing and uh, the Human they've Torch. They actually do that one a lot now. They've, <laughs> they've done that so, particular one like four or five times since they did it the first time. <laughs> they keep so they, putting they, Doom and Galactus. Yeah, so they did the they did that, and um, what else was some other tiers? The other ones is we're getting a Frankie Nova uh, Harold and she's gonna be uh, pretty awesome. She's uh comes with even a fire stand that you can put in Galactus's hand, and she looks you know pretty awesome, like she's actually flying with the fire. Uh, the other one that we're getting that we unlocked was a Silver Surfer, and he also comes with a um, stand that looks like he's flying off, and it's kind of like a purple energy, and then he comes with like some purple energy effects and uh new head sculpt too, because they've done Silver Surfer before in the past, but um this one will come with like a different head sculpt. Um, and then the other one was was a very unique kind of character I never even heard of either. Um, and there was a couple a couple of heralds I've never heard of until I started, you know, to this came out. And a lot of people were asking for these other heralds to come out, like Airwalker. Never heard of him. Oh, yeah. But the cool other guy. one was uh, Morg is another uh, action figure that will be available to uh, come with this. And he's looking pretty awesome. I've never heard of Morg either. But, yeah, he's another herald of uh, Galactus. And uh, there'll be another... Uh, People uh, forget no. he has had a shit ton of heralds. <laughs> yeah, he's like, got a lot. I was looking at they were people posting like the whole like crew. I was like, dang, I've never seen maybe half of these guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, it, it really does have a shit ton of them. So uh, uh, it was pretty cool. So, but uh, yeah, other than that, uh, you know, support it today. If not, then that's it, done for, and then maybe pay more. Uh, but it is four hundred dollar price tag. But again, like I said, you may end up paying. Eight hundred, a thousand dollars, if you end up wanting to buy them aftermarket. So I would, you know, probably spend that money now than spending more later on if you really do want them. Uh, but and then also too, they said maybe later down the next year, you know, they'll also maybe give us more things to go with our Galactus. They were saying so maybe that they will give us Airwalker and all these other heralds that he's had before too. Um, 
But yeah, so a lot of releases. <laughs> yeah, so there one people was like maybe they'll just do a, a Galactus uh, Herald wave, so that would be pretty cool. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. That's uh, yeah, check the you know check out the designs online. Uh, it looks pretty cool. He's gonna be pretty awesome. So I looked up the other faceplate is the um, Annihilation Wave Galactus, which is like dead Galactus. Yeah, or it might like, be it, yeah. it might be or from even Corpse zombies. Galactus. You can even do zombies yeah. uh, Galactus with him. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was like I think a more open mouth, right? And he's like more angry, I think. Yeah, yeah. He's just kind of got like an angry face. I'm not gonna but, lie. I like all the figures except Galactus. I don't like his headpiece. With you the like double... headpiece? <laughs> yeah, I don't like the double circle design. Oh, okay. But I do like all the um everything else. And I like all the other faces. Like the other faces kind of make up for it when you have Doom and uh the death face. It just distracts from the head. So I just don't even look. I'm like, yeah, look at that cool out fucking face. <laughs> one yeah, some guys are like, nah, damn, now I gotta buy a second one. Uh, how how do I explain to my wife that I need to buy two just so that I could put one with the Doom head and the other one with the Galactus? <laughs> yeah, so, good luck explaining that one to your wife. It's like, sorry, uh, honey, no room for a, a anniversary gift this year. I brought Can this I... two childs. <laughs> uh, yep, but yeah, that, that, that's pretty really cool. Uh, be excited to get that. And then also too, Those they uh, if anybody uh, did the Sentinel last year that they did the Haslab, uh, which you think he was only twenty three inches tall, still a pretty big figure. But um, they're they're going to be starting the ship out here at the starting in September, they said. So we should start seeing those coming in the mail here soon. So if you guys did order those, be ready for those to come soon. <laughs> um, other than that, that's pretty much all I had to say about those ones. And then, um, I think, oh, you know what I was kind of sad about was uh, we did lose Ed Asner, who was, um, you know, he did some pretty big roles. I know a lot of people will probably know him for the movie Up. Um, I know mo more of him for my favorite role of uh, the J. John Jameson in the 90s uh spider-man show yeah. he did a lot of good voice work yeah did did a lot of good voice work so it was pretty he, sad to see him he was really like if you ever watched cartoons in the 90s he was like a very stereotypical angry guy like he played yeah. the angry not quite yet old man and then once you got to the 2000s he played the angry old man so yeah, it was a, a sad. I mean, he lived a pretty good long life, I would say. I mean, oh, ninety one, yeah, pretty good. So that's and it, good. Uh -huh. And I always got to remember that for like we've been losing a lot of these older actors and actresses, voice actors and actresses. Uh, same with the uh, actress who voiced Muriel Bag, um, and even obviously a couple years before that, the uh, the actor who voiced uh, Eustace. So yeah, you know, he, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's just kind of part of the the I get and I keep t telling them, us through the ones right. It's just gonna keep happening at a more increasing rate since we have more and more celebrities as time goes on. Right. Even to the sense that like back in the day you only had like movie celebrities and then you got sports celebrities and now there's video game celebrities and YouTube celebrities. Right. And, right. Yeah. I. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And so it it's, is yeah, absolutely sad. It but... makes me feel old. <laughs> it's we dead. are old. We're getting it makes old. Me feel old. We're we're pretty yeah. old now. Um, yeah, no, it... we're not very old yet, but we're getting there very quick, as as we all do. But now, I mean, I feel it. But at the same time, I think it's really an an interesting progression once again because it's just like once again we were kids that didn't happen, right? Yeah. It, it, you didn't have like three times a week. It's like your favorite actor just died and your sports, is, but it was because. <laughs> acting in sports started you know in like the 30s and the 40s 20s 30s 40s and really didn't kick off heavy until time moved and now they're getting to those ages where they're passing on right. unfortunately and sometimes we just got to stop and remember like all the great things they brought us i think that's the thing we got to do for them because there's especially with is different for like people nowadays certain celebrities like Paul Walker or even you could say like Patrick Swayze who were really kind of taken before their time by sickness or it, or accidents mm -hmm. as opposed to a lot of these actors and actresses like who are just reaching that age right yeah. um except for Betty White who gets to live forever she That's will what I say. she, she will always... <laughs> stand over your grave and dance and laugh cuz <laughs> Yeah, I do not know how, but 
Yep. And once again, one day that that joke's going to go stale because Betty White's going to die, which is going <laughs> to be the sad. Like, that's going to be s- s- just as sad almost is the death of Betty White memes. Like, that's going to be ridiculous. Oh. Like, we, like, they've been a staple now of the internet for as long, basically, as the internet's been around. <laughs> There's been Betty White jokes. That's oh. wild to think about. But, yeah, so I, it's just crazy. And I, I think about it sometimes where I'm like, man, it's so cool to see all these Spider-Man movies, right? And all of these things. And then I wonder, well, what is what is Spi- what will Spider-Man movies look like 100 years from now? Yeah, I exactly. Because me like, and you will it's... not be here to see those. No, you know what I mean, maybe no. we'll, if we're lucky, we'll catch another 50-ish years of good Marvel entertainment. Although I'm expecting a 10-year gap when something bad happens and it, it all goes to crap. Mm-hmm. I'm really yeah curious about how that's gonna you go you know because like they always say right that saying is all good things have to come to an end right <laughs> it, it it really does I don't know man Saturday Night Live still be cracking out bangers sometimes though. <laughs> no but and and that's the thing is I wonder right one this progression eventually will end at some point or or maybe just stagnate a bit right like maybe we're just not gonna get a new superhero movie every year. Or, or yeah, as every... many that because yeah. we get so many, we're so spoiled now. I think that's why a lot of these actors and directors, or not actors, sorry, directors and little can be snobs about, which is true, you know, because they're like, this is all that's all they see, you know, and it is true, that's all we do see on the in the screens nowadays, just these big blockbuster action movies, and you don't really get those like. I guess you still do, but you have to kind of still find them, and they're like usually at those Sundance films, these you know really heartfelt, close to home, you know, yeah. you know, I personal mean, they're, movies. <laughs> they're out there, but I feel yeah, like nowadays but... these and and there's I think there's a point to it. Uh, my my cousin actually said it to me once many years ago, like long before streaming was even really a thing. She she told me she's like I'm not gonna go to the theaters to watch a movie with no special effects. I'll wait oh. until it releases and watch it at home. Because she said there's oh. no reason to watch it on a big screen. <laughs> and she made yeah. a really good point. There's no special sound effects. There's no bigger yeah. experience yeah. you get, except for the experience we talked about going to the movies and watching movies with people, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. besides that, it, but yeah, yeah, besides yeah. that, there's like, it, even to the sense of like, that's why drive throughs exist, right? Or drive, drive-ins drive exist. Because... Right. It's an individual experience that you can't get anywhere else. Except now you kind of can. So it, it's just one of those ones. Here, because I was things about to die. I thought no I put my man. charger over here. I thought I just had it. Oh, it's the same. Oh, I think this is it. Yep. Um, I know this is a different one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that one came from. I have the big plug, but I don't have the other one. Well, anyway, I know we're kind of getting up to our, to yeah, our hour here anyways. Time, yeah. um, but I guess I just want to bring up some last minute things here was that uh, I know Riri Williams is going to be uh, something coming out in the Wakanda Forever stuff. I was actually really? going to start. Uh, yeah, that they she, she's she been confirmed. Uh, That's cool. Even Kevin Feige came out and said it. He's like, yeah, she's confirmed to be in the Wakanda Forever uh, movie so she will see her in there um and i i think yeah they're really going hardcore on the younger generation um oh, yeah. Yeah. marvel avenger characters um so we'll see what we'll, we'll end up and we'll see i think uh, you know i think they'll really stay and stick because you know comic yeah. fans are really you know they get iffy about like you know them changing the status quo but like the regular moviegoers ain't gonna get really give a crap of like hey oh is that the new iron man she's a black girl oh yeah oh hell yeah let's go watch uh, <laughs> that Usually I'd say yes in this case, except for in this specific case where Iron Man is now a black girl. And we know how people get about that for some reason when people when there's a big change. Right? Like when they change a jack, an actor's or a character's gender or race, it's, it's a huge issue now in Hollywood. Right. Yeah, I hope they don't. I just hope they kind of make it into she's not like replacing Iron Man. She is kind of supposed to be her own character she's, i mean she, she i mean she is the new iron man but she's not iron man it, this yeah. isn't this isn't uh uh wally west and 
uh, Barry Allen, right? That's not this situation where he's literally taking the mantle. Yeah, take, yep, taking the mantle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's this is just her, you know, being her own person, but also just, you know, she's very smart as well, and she just mm -hmm. admires Iron Man and all the work that he does and stuff. So it's like, it makes sense to, you know, kind of, be kind of want to be almost like him but still be your own thing it's not even the yourself. first iron man clone yeah you have yeah exactly. iron lad yeah. you have right this isn't new this is a typical superhero thing the mm -hmm. sidekick or the second right is always inspired by their mentor or by right somebody else like the the new characters do come but like if your character has similar powers, it makes a lot of sense that they're inspired by a character with similar powers in your universe, right? You're not going to, even to the sake of like, um, right, the Chinese Justice League or whatever in DC where you have Chinese Superman, like his power, he's not Kryptonian, right? He just has very similar powers to Superman. I actually think he has the exact same power set, but that's not the point, right? Like... The point being that every superhero from the Flash, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, uh, Spider-Man kind of to as well with Miles Morales, but like right, like any hero you name with a couple exceptions is going to have this kind of character who is similar to them that has been yeah. inspired or spawned by them. Yeah. And so I just never saw the the anger, especially if it wasn't like. Right, like, people were, same with Miles Morales, where it's like, oh, he, he's taking the mantle. It's like, yeah, but the story was written that way. It was yeah. written and that Peter dies and Miles takes over. And it wasn't like it was this sudden thing. Ultimate right. Spider-Man ran for, like, two years before they killed Peter. You know, it's, and now look at Miles. He's, like, one of the most popular characters out there. As his his, his first appearance now is up the yin-yang now, like... Those books were quite like a lot. I should have jumped in on those books when they were cheap. Like literally, they were twenty dollars books, and now now that book can go to like eight hundred. Yeah, he, uh, he's a popular character now. He's he's getting yeah. up there now. And once again, with some of these ones where uh, we talk about a lot with Bendis, right? Where like he may not people don't. I feel like people don't enjoy Bendis in the moment, but then when I ask people about some of their like favorite characters or moments for characters they come from bendis characters and arcs and so we kind of have to tip our hat to the man for being able to at least create good characters that breed good stories right like, and i can put it and it's not just heroes right like you can pull out villains there's a lot of great things he's done for different characters so it's it's always surprising to me the hatred that new characters get because every character started as a new character at some point. And most comic book characters started as a ripoff of another comic book character. Yeah, both. <laughs> I mean, just like 80% of them. Right? Like, even, even people's favorites have huge pieces that are ripped straight from other comic book characters. I found my cable. <laughs> no worries. But, yeah, so, exactly, yeah. And so, um, like... You should give new characters a chance, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Because then you get uh, things like Alligator Loki. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I uh, we actually just got the Funko Pop of him. Oh nice! Uh, he looks pretty awesome. Yeah, I yeah. I didn't get any of the other Lokis except that one. <laughs> I don't blame the you. Only one I really liked it. Yeah, um, I don't blame you, man. That was now for the for the Ruby stuff. I actually just um, I'm starting to hopefully get him more into my YouTube channel. Um, but I'm going to hopefully do, I guess the first video might be uh, an introduction of Riri. It's going to be really short, be like a f three minute, nothing big, but uh, just to kind of, you know, talk about her and, you know, share, share some news, maybe ex show some, some of the pictures that they have her on set. Um, but yeah, I'm hopefully, we'll hopefully post that up and uh, see if anybody wants to check that out. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, but uh, other than that, I mean, comic wise, uh, I've been still reading Spider-Man. Um, it's been getting pretty good. It's it's all right. It has its moments. Uh, I'm kind of curious on where this whole Kindred thing is finally going to end up. I was going to say, uh, it's been going now for like in and out for like two years or something. It's the issue 71 now. And uh, yeah, he, he literally introduced Kindred. I think it was in the first issue of his book. Yeah. So 
and he's been pl yeah he's been plotting that since then so it's like yeah he, we're, he shouldn't expect he likes to play year, the long man. game <laughs> he, he definitely does to be fair if you're gonna play the long game spider-man's a title to do it on yeah because that's that title ain't getting canceled <laughs> no time no soon. definitely not um, uh and some of the better stories are long burners so you know yeah yeah so i've been reading the spider-man books um i've been checking out i know venom ended a while back yeah. um that was pretty good i'm excited to see where uh owie wing goes with his venom run um i did see some previews of the new hulk coming out for donny kate's run and i'm a little curious on where that's gonna go because he um uh, He's it's it's already in the title. He is no longer immortal. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're um, we're it's gonna be interesting because for one, because they've I'm not gonna lie, I've been ke I've been keeping up on the current Hulk run and the the the, the ending is, feels like it's gonna be really weak. Well, I hope not. I mean, he did say yeah. it was gonna be a grant like a bigger size issue, which I don't know how many. Maybe they'll be able to do an it. issue. Yeah, they're um, gonna need some time to pull this together because the last couple issues have been. Yeah, they've been kind of all right. Yeah, they're just I, not yeah. leading to a good place of resolution. I see what, yeah, I, you know I feel what I mean. Like, yeah. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're not wrapping or getting ready to wrap yeah. up. Any, I mean, like the way. whole thing with like Betty and the Hulk and all that. Like, I mean, did that really need to happen in there? I don't know. Like, should there be was, more. Yeah. Should be more focused on like the story of like what this is big thing you're trying to lead to. Right. Going there through. was there was a lot. There was a lot to it. Whereas, like, especially considering how good the rest of the run has been most of, for the most part it's just like it feels a lot like when we were in shadow base again you know what i mean well, that was my ha i hated that arc that arc was not my favorite arc it, it had okay parts but the arc itself was easily the weakest part yeah um, not my what favorite else, for what sure have I, been, I, I know i've been keeping Extreme up on carnage has been good have you been reading that one i've actually I've been, been enjoying that so far them out on and off i've mostly been reading like the side ones where it's like extreme carnage scream or extreme carnage uh yeah that's uh, it's like a whole eight parter yeah so that, oh, that would okay be so then the yeah first... i have been reading it yeah so they um it i think they've only it. done four issues so far so they only need or actually no five so far i think and so then, then they need to do um three more and then they're done with that storyline but yeah that's pretty good i've been liking that one um let's see what was some other marvel stuff i've been reading here i haven't checked out the spirits of vengeance vengeance yet spirit rider um been that's wanting to right, read that man. um the um the eternals just finished their first arc in their new book which was pretty decent I still have to catch up on that one. I'm barely on the first issue on that one. I still need to yeah, start it's reading that like one. A, I think it's issue six now or something. Something like that. And then the rest of Marvel's doing okay, but it's really, once again, if I had to... Oh, they did do Gamma Flight. Gamma Flight wasn't too bad. I haven't and they started just, that run yet either. I have uh, had to start that one. And then they just gave Kang his uh, comic again. So. I have, uh, how is that one going? It's, oh, well, it's on its first issue still so it's not really okay. been able to go anywhere oh i didn't know but... i thought they were at least on the second one so far but okay uh, maybe they're on two but i think they're just on one still yeah it's just one it's it's pretty cool it's really i think to tie in the mcu you know what i mean and give kang more base so that there's a reason for people watching the movies by comics right <laughs> and then um did you hear that uh jonathan hickman will no longer be doing the x-men stuff here i think i don't know when did he say that they were really gonna, yeah, you have to look it up, but yeah, he's gonna be done with it here. I think. Uh, so is he I think finishing? He he's his done run after. Or? I think he said, that, "Yeah, he's like done with everything for now, like with all X Men stuff." Um, he's yeah, he's done after the Inferno uh, storyline, and that's pretty much it. I think after that. Ooh, that's gonna be interesting. He's... I guess we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's not that he hasn't done a lot of good work so far, oh, in in a lot of no. ways, but. Well, they, so look this up, but a lot of the creators have started substacks. Um, let's see, James Tinian just, he literally just quit Batman. Yeah, I heard he'd quit <laughs> and he, Batman. He, he quit Batman on issue 100, and he's uh, he's starting this, the, all these creators are, are like following his suit, I think. I don't know if it was him that started it, but uh, I kind of feel like he was. But anyways, um, yeah, they're all kind of starting their own little thing on this website where... 
you know, they, they kind of make their own com- I think it's supposed to be all just kind of digital comics though, because it's uh, yeah, no, I mean, and it's probably it's probably under his tiny onion thing, so yeah, it's tiny onion. And then a lot, a lot of people, are, well, a lot of he was saying was that you know we'll have more of my universe kind of stuff that I've been writing for other books into this Substack. So if you want to you know keep even more into the universe, which is a good marketing, you know, if you want to. No, and I mean, there's, it's not like there's not a market for it. Um, it's going to be interesting because the, there's a lot of problems in general with comics altogether right now. Like, huge, monstrous issues, honestly, that are leading towards that, which is just webtooning in a lot of ways. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. Webtoon has some of the most popular titles out right now. Uh, Tower of God got a high school. Um, probably half of the best things that came out this year came from a webtoon or last year. So there's nothing wrong with it, but that does look like what comics are going to be evolving into in the future. I mean, there will still be physical comics and stuff, but the kind of independent creator driven comic model that they're looking for kind of there is already in place with webtoon. And it looks like yeah. they're just doing like a very similar version of it if they only go digital, obviously. Let me see who's all joining. So I know Scott Scott Snyder is going to Substack. Celine Amid is going, and he's been doing the uh, Miles Morales stuff. Uh, Molly Knox. Um, I think even Scotty Young was even going there. I mean, um, I'm sure they'll get a lot of great people. Yeah. The the question um, that always comes out for these is twofold one is availability and like presence so like they're really good third-party comic books mm-hmm. and, and even longer running series you know like invincible etc that are you know getting the light of day and coming out now but as far as visibility they lack heavily towards marvel and dc right like they basically own the marketing as far as like comic presence in the public's mind uh, for people who aren't like comic initiated, when you say comics, those are what they know is Marvel or DC. And so it'll be interesting to see how many people are reading comics for the character instead of the writing, plot, art, etc. And so then which ones will move over? Whereas I think they'll honestly have more luck getting new fans not not to say people won't follow them over at all but they'll probably f- receive a far larger influx of just new fans from the internet yeah yeah Huge, that could i act. mean just webtoon based right that's mm-hmm. just all i'm basing it on is like once again all these ones on webtoon for the most part are no name no universe no no basis right they had no fan base they had no prior publishing they, company any of that and they may change all that i mean because well, i'm reading this up a little bit but it looks like nick spencer <laughs> was the first guy to start this all up with wow. uh Substack. um he's actually working with them uh to kind of do like um like you know set up like uh ways to like you know how to use the, their platform and all that kind of stuff for it um so yeah I, I, that's kind of yeah crazy to see that he was the one that uh that start this up. Wild. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I'm happy to see it because it's going to give the um, writers a lot more leverage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, just, and then yeah. they could do like universes now, like because yeah, like webtoons usually are just kind of like you know this almost like a like a newspaper comic book, you know, almost some different. But then there has been like you said, there's been the High School of God kind of stuff. That's well, also like I said, that those big. are all the good like probably. N- Five out of ten of last year's top ten anime based on webtoons. And so oh. they mostly don't, but that's the same issue as anything else, right? Like, uh, connective creators, right? Like, webtoons are written continuously like a long-running comic, right? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, like hundreds of chapters. Uh-huh. As opposed to, like, smaller, more connected things like comics where right you will have 20 20 or 50 chapters on this run then you start over and it makes it a little easier to universe right when you write in parcels if that makes any sense right but um, uh i do see that that's going to be a big benefit of them like keeping it together 
Although they can do that on any anywhere, as long as it's online. You know, what I mean? that's the big difference. Is just like being online is what's going to separate them from like a typical comic distribution model. You know what I mean? I see. Yeah, let me, I'm reading up a little bit more on this. And oh yeah, so Jonathan Hickman's another one that joined Substack. Uh, Al Ewing is also one. I didn't even know him. Wow. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of guys jumping ship to go to this. Oh, and I well, was. Well, they're, they're I, obviously not all jumping ship if Al Ewing is going over. I did just hear too as well. James Tinian. Um, uh, he actually he turned down his three uh, three year contract with DC just so he can go with Substack instead and did his contract with them. So I, I don't know. I guess we'll we'll see how where well, this the, is all going to go. The thing um, is, like, no matter what, and this is it's the funny thing about it, they're going to make more money regardless, almost of how well this does. Like, this could do terribly in terms of, like, overall exposure and, like, getting the message out to people. They're going to rake in more money just by owning their properties, which is wild to consider. But it's just yeah. – it's it's a it's a way better business move for them. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing, too. Yeah, because everything they'll do on their um, mm -hmm. pay... – Substack's saying that their – They take the a little fee, claims but... neutrality and that it doesn't play an editorial role. Yeah, no. But it's also clearly courting individuals for their editorial content. And let's face it, it's con – well, we'll see. Controversy sells. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll see. The, the the thing is, is there the difference is there's no mandate. Like, yeah, that's it's why it's funny because we talked about right how this will they this will have a universe unlike webtoons. But the whole point of this is that it doesn't have to conform to anybody's universe, right? Like they don't have to write according to what DC or Marvel tell them they can write. They write the they want, and yeah. so it's going to be really interesting. And that's why I kind of disagree a bit with that. Now they can manipulate the website and other things to make it easier or more accessible to content they like right like put all their favorite content on the top of the page right or make it harder to get to content they don't like but if but that's not the same as content curation necessarily that that's content display right like how easy is it to access a product as opposed to i change what's inside of the product but right, right. I, I, I'm all for it. Like I said, I like the idea because regardless of how well their individual books do, they're going to create competition for one. So like Marvel and DC just from these other companies existing have to work harder and do better or else they, they fall, right? Like that's just yeah. how capitalism works yeah. or should work, I should say, should work. Uh, the other exactly. thing is online distribution – like we we've talked about it time and time again that the death of comics, the death of the movie theater, these things are coming. They are basically intrinsically and inevitably coming. Will they exist? Yes, in the same way that records still exist, right? Records, you could go buy a record like you said, the Cowboy Bebop, you can go buy a record right now. Probably pressed, play it on your thing. There's things you could go buy to play it, to listen to it. But in general, it is not a very profitable or super prevalent market and and unfortunately movie theaters and comic books are going there it's yeah a, it's sad but that's yeah. technology is driving them there and without a conscious effort from the public to not do that it's gonna happen right right yeah, yeah. well well, yeah, other than that, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to bring up was the Substack stuff because I know that was a pretty big thing that's been kind of going through the comic cool. community. Um, yeah, since the last, uh, I want to say the last maybe two weeks, I think it started up. Uh, they say Substack just started doing the comic creator stuff back in June, so uh, maybe it has been going on a little bit longer than that and uh, uh, just decided just, to bring it up right. now. <laughs> it happens. Uh, or maybe it just got popular now. We've talked about how things yeah. get popular. I think it was James Tinney and that kind of brought my... Because you know why? Because I'm on his newsletter and he kind of brought it up in there saying he was quitting DC and all this and that. Like, the, he's I mean, that was pretty he's very big like, uh, He's very like uh, open about what happens there. He even kind of talked about like how 5G was a real thing and like, all, like how he was working. Yeah, so... 
I, I find it funny that people still see like 5G was a myth and it was never going to happen. It was literally <laughs> mentioned by name in a comic book. <laughs> what do you mean it was a myth? It There's was people... mentioned. Yeah, I don't know how, how that happens. But like, yeah, a lot of these DC people are like, no, there was no 5G. 5G was never a real thing. These are the, they, it was Robinson. until what's his name got fired. Dan, uh, was it? Uh, what's his name? Dan uh, Didio, I think. Or no? Yeah, uh, yeah, Didio. I mean, he was the one that's spearheading the whole idea, and I guess. Yeah. And I'm Warner not Brothers saying it should have like existed it. or anything. <laughs> just that it was absolutely a thing. And yeah. I can put comic put but I I can't remember who said it, but it's right there next to the the uh, Marvel crossover tease or whatever that they had done. So it's. These are the same people who think per- Superman punched a universe in an anvil. So don't worry about it. They don't know what they're doing. They can't read comic book context or understand simple, simple but, things like that. <laughs> no, I get it. That, but it is, yeah. yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, I wonder if he's still doing his uh, DC versus vampires now because he was actually supposed to be doing that. And I don't know. I, well, I, I, I doubt it very that. much, man. I mean, maybe if it's still under contract or he'd already been paid for it. Finish it yeah, he has to try write it out still. That probably be his last thing he does. Yeah, uh, and I don't, I don't really blame him, man. Like once again, I the, the DC and Marvel. Have always I mean, he didn't really treated. sign up to stay with DC that long. He was only so he told us like he was only supposed to be on for a few issues, but then DC ended up liking it so much of his work and. He, he's like, okay, I guess I'll stay on a little bit longer. And, but once uh, again, yeah, DC really is... Marvel, too. The, the Both companies are guilty, but they just don't take care of their artists and their writers and shit. They just don't seem to give a shit. Like, they'll get what they can out of them, and then, like... Basically, I can't think of artists who haven't, at one point or another, been burned by one of the companies. Well, other than that, I think that was pretty much all I had to say here on my end. Um, but hopefully yeah, we got some more things to talk about next week. And like I said, I'll hopefully try to do some videos and we'll po- I'll post some stuff on our uh, the page too as well. And uh, yeah, Sweet. we'll go from there. But... Uh, I was going to say uh, did we can still show that Moon Knight trailer. Yeah, 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 if you have that down. Let's see, where do I have it? Where's the question? Aha, uh-huh. Moon Knight. Bam. Bam. All right, there we go. I was the best. There we go. Okay. Sorry, I just had to make sure everything work. <laughs> it's like, what was that? Ah, uh, you know, I was just saying that shit. All right, and here we go. Oh, I swear man. I'd seen a better one than that, though. That for sure wasn't the one I saw. I was like, it started, and I was like, what the f- is this? weird music and like random scenery uh yeah but yeah we'll we'll stay posted and see maybe it was just some trailer shots who knows what got released that could have been it yeah but uh yeah that 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 should be it uh i know gamescom was too uh, this week but we could talk about that next week about some of the games that were kind of some big things that came out yeah that sounds Uh, good we'll uh we'll save that for next week's episode for now, uh, thanks everyone for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next time on Comic Convos. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect, and we can always improve. So please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.